Live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE. Covering Microsoft Ignite. Brought to you by Cohesity and theCUBE's ecosystem partners. Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage of Microsoft Ignite here in Orlando, Florida. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, Stu Miniman. We're joined by Joachim Hammer. He is the Principal Product Manager at Microsoft. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Sure, you're welcome. Happy to be here. So there's been a lot of news and announcements with um, Azure SQL. Can you, can you sort of walk our viewers through a little bit about what, what's happened here at Ignite this week? Oh, sure thing. So first of all, I think it's a great time to be a, a customer of Azure SQL Database. We have a lot of innovations. And, and the latest one that uh, we're really proud of and, and we're just uh, announced GA is a SQL Managed Instance. So um, our family of, of database offers had so far a single database and then a pool of databases where you could do resource sharing. What was missing was this, this one ability for enterprise customers to migrate their workloads into Azure and take advantage of Azure without having to do any rewriting or refactoring and managed instance does exactly this. It's a way for, for enterprise customers to take their workloads, migrate them, uh, it has all the features that uh, they're used to from SQL Server on-prem, including all the security, uh, which is of course, as you can imagine, always a concern in the cloud where you need to have the same or better security that customers are used to from on-prem and, and manage with managed instance, we have the security isolation, we have private IPv nets, uh, we have all the intelligent protection that we have in Azure, so it's a real package. And, and so this was a big deal for us, and, and it's, it went, the general purpose version went GA uh, yesterday, actually, so or it's yeah, you, 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 the you, announcement. Security is really, really interesting, because of course database is at the core of so many customers' businesses. Uh, you, you, you've been in this industry for, for a while. What, what do you see from customers as to the drivers in the differences of going to public cloud deployments uh, versus really owning their database in-house and uh, you know, are, are security meeting the needs of what customers need now? Yeah, sure. So uh, you're right, security is, is probably the most important topic or one of the most important topics that comes up when you discuss the cloud. And, and what customers want is they want um, a trust, they want this trust relationship that we do the right thing. And doing the right thing means we have all the compliances, all that we adhere to all the privacy standards, but then we also offer them the state of the art security so that they can rely on, on Microsoft, on Azure for the next uh, however many years they want to use the cloud to develop customer leading edge security. And, and we do this, for example, with our encryption technology with Always Encrypted. This is one of those technologies that helps you protect your database against, uh, against attacks by, by encrypting sensitive data, and, and the data remains encrypted even though we can you know, we process queries against it, so, so we protect against uh, third-party attacks on, on the database. So always encrypted is one of those technologies that may not be for everybody today, but customers get the sense that yes, Microsoft is thinking ahead, they're developing the security offering, and I can trust them that they continue to do this and keep my data safe and secure. Trust is so fundamental to, to this whole entire enterprise. How do you build trust with your customers? I mean, you, you have the reputation, but how do you really go about getting your customers to say, okay, I'm going to board your train? That's a good question, <laughs> Rebecca. Um, I think, as I said, it starts with a portfolio of compliance requirements that we have and that we provide for Azure SQL Database and, and all the other Azure services as well. But it also goes beyond that. It, it goes, uh, for example, we have this right to audit uh, capability in Azure where a company can, can come to us and says, we want to look behind the scenes. We want to see what auditors see so that we can we can, we can really believe that you are doing all the things you're saying, like uh, you're, you're updating your virus protection, you're patching, and, and, and you have all the right administrative workflows. So this is one way for us to say, yeah, our doors are open. If you want to come and see what we do, then you can come and peek behind the scenes, so to speak. And then, and then the other, uh, the third part is, is um, by, by developing features like, like we do that, uh, help customers, first of all, make it easy to secure the database and, uh, and, and help them understand uh, vulnerabilities and help them understand the configurations of their database and then implement a security strategy 
that they feel comfortable with and then letting them move that strategy into the cloud and implement it and I think that's, that's what we do in Azure and that's why we've had so much success so far. Yeah. Earlier this week we interviewed one of your peers, talked about Cosmos DB. Okay. There's a certain type of scale we talk about there. Scale means different things to different size customers. What does scale mean to, in, in, in your space? Yeah, so you're right, scale can mean a lot of different things and, and actually uh, thank you for bringing this up. So we have another announcement that we made, uh, namely hyperscale, uh, hyperscale architecture. Uh, so far in Azure SQL DB we were pretty much constrained in terms of space by the underlying hardware, what, how much storage comes on these VMs. And, uh, and thanks to our re-architectured you know, architected hardware, we, uh, sorry, software, we now have the ability to scale way beyond four terabytes, which is the current limit of Azure SQL DB. So we can go to 64 terabytes, 100 terabytes, and we can, and, and not only does that free up from, free us from, from the limitations, but it also keeps it simple for customers. So customers don't have to go and, and build a complicated scale-out architecture to take advantage of this. They can just you know, turn a knob in our portal and then we give them as much horsepower as they need to, including the storage. And in order for this to happen, we had to do a lot of work. So it doesn't just mean we, you know, we didn't just re-architect storage, but we also have to make failover faster. We have to continue to invest in our online operations like online index, you know, rebuild and create to make those resumable, pause and resumable so that with bigger and bigger databases, you can actually do all those activities that you used to do you know, without you know, getting in the way of your workloads. So, a lot of work, but uh, we have hyperscale now in, in Azure SQL DB, and, and so I think this is another sort of um, something that customers will be really excited about. Yeah, so, so sounds like that would, could have been a real pain point for a lot of DBAs out there. I'm wondering, I'm sure as a, as a PM, you know, you get lots of feedback from customers. What, what, what are the biggest challenges they're facing? What, what are some of the things they're excited about uh, that, that, that Microsoft's helping them with these days? So you're right, this was a big pain point because if you go to a big enterprise customer and say, hey, bring your workload to Azure, and then they say, oh yeah, great, we've got this, this big telemetry database here, what's your size limit? And you have to say four terabytes, that doesn't <laughs> go too well. So, so that's, that's one thing that's, that's, that we removed that blocker, thankfully. Um, can, you know, other, other pain points I think we, we have by and large, I, mean, I think the, the large pain points are we're, we've removed, I think we have small ones where we're still working on, on uh, making um, our deployments uh, less painful for some customers. There's customers who are really, really sensitive to disconnects or, or you know, latent variations in latency and sometimes when we do deployments, worldwide deployments, we are impacting some of these customers. So this is a pain point that we're currently working on um, security, as you said, is always a pain point, and so this is something that will stay with us, and we just have to make sure that we're keeping up with the security demands from customers. Um, and then uh, another pain point, or has been a pain point for customers, especially customers SQL Server on-prem, is the, the um, performance tuning. I mean, you have to be a really, really good DBA to tune your workloads well, and so this is something that we are working on in Azure SQL DB with, all our, with our intelligent performance uh, tuning. This is a pain point that we are removing. We've removed a lot of it already. Uh, there's still, you know, occasionally, there's still customers who are complaining about performance and, and that's you know, understood. Uh, and, and this is something that we're also trying to help them with, make it easier, give them insights into what their workload is doing, where are the, the weights, and, and you know, where are the slow queries, and then, and then help them you know, diffuse that. So, I think, so th thinking about these announcements and the changes that you've made to improve functionality and increase, not have size limits be such a, a, a roadblock, um, when, you, when you're thinking ahead to making the database more intelligent, what are some of the things you're most excited about that are still in progress right now, still in development, that, we, that we'll be talking about at next year's Ignite? Yeah, so, um, personally for me, on the security side, what's really exciting to me is the, so, so security is a very complicated topic and, and, and not all of our customers are fully comfortable figuring out what is my, my security strategy and how do I implement it and is my data really secure? So understanding threads, understanding all this technology. So I think one of the, the visions that gets me excited about the, the potential of the cloud is that we can make security in the future, hopefully as easy as we were able to make query processing with the invention of the relational model. 
where we made this leap from having to write code to access your data to basically a declarative SQL type language where you just say, this is what I want and I don't care how the database system returns it to me. First, if you translate that to security, what would be ideal, the sort of the North Star is to, tell, to have customers in some declarative policy based manner say, I have some data that I don't want to trust into the cloud. Uh, please find the sensitive information here and then protect it so that I'm meeting um, uh, ISO or I'm meeting HIPAA uh, requirements or that I'm meeting my internal, you know, every company has internal policies about how data needs to be secured and handled. And so if they could translate that into a declarative policy and then upload that to us and then we figure out behind the scenes these are the things we need to, you need to turn on auditing, and these are where the audit events have to go, and this is where the data has to be protected. But before all that, we actually identify all the sensitive data for you, we'll tag it and so forth. That to me is, is um, in a, a tremendous sort of untapped potential of the cloud. That's where I think this intelligence could go potentially. Yeah, great. Who knows, maybe. <laughs> well, we, sh we shall see next year's Ignite. We are making inroads there. We have a classification engine that helps customers find sensitive data. We have a vulnerability assessment, a, a rules engine that allows you to um, basically un, um, uh, test the configuration of your database against potential vulnerabilities. So we, and we have threat detection. So we have a lot of the pieces. And I think the next step for us is to put these all together into something that can then be um, much more automated so that a customer doesn't have to think technology anymore. They, have to, they can think business, they can think about the, the kinds of compliances they have to meet. They can think about, based on these compliances, this data can go this month, and then this data can go maybe next year, or you know, in that kind of terms. So Great. I think that's, that to me is exciting. Well, Joachim, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. It was a pleasure having you here. It was, was my pleasure too, thank you. I'm Rebecca Knight for Stu Miniman. We will have more from theCUBE's live coverage of Microsoft Ignite coming up in just a little bit.